Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about MOSFET circuits. This is our example about a MOSFET amplifier. It will be our first example. In this example we will look at a common source amplifier. Where you see the MOSFET here, it will be an N-channel enhancement MOSFET type. And we will see how we can work out the voltage gain and also the DC analysis and also the AC analysis for this circuit. So that will be an N-channel enhancement MOSFET or E-MOSFET and it will be an AC coupled amplifier. You can see this is an AC coupled circuit. Of course we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have this circuit given here we see the full resistor biasing network R1, R2, RD and RS. So the values are shown here. We also have an R in and a V in here, which is then the source modeling. We we'll see also the load, which is RL, and also the coupling capacitors C1 and C2. The CS is here, the bypass capacitor, which will then bypass that resistor RS, which is the source resistor. We have two DC volt sources, so it is uh, symmetrically biased or symmetrically uh, uh, powered, so VDD and VSS. And the N channel E MOSFET parameters are the threshold voltage of 2.5 volts, and we have a conduction parameter KN of 52.1 milliamps per square volts. Now, for this example, we would like to calculate the voltage gain, which is from the input to the output. So, the output voltage divided by the input voltage that's shown here. Okay, the solutions. We start with the DC analysis first. So, that means we consider the circuit in a DC condition. That means the capacitors are perfectly open. That is the ideal condition. So we have this circuit. So this circuit initially is reduced to that circuit. So the input is disconnected because it's an open. And also the load is disconnected. And also this is open, so it's gone. So we only have this. So see the, all the DC parameters. We know that the gate current is zero. So we can also recognize that here. This note is G and that will be then used for our analysis. So for the DC analysis, we will work towards the, uh, the drain current and also the other parameters. So we first assume that for this, the saturation region of operation. What does it mean? We can say for this region of operation that the gate to source voltage, which is from the gate to source, must be larger than at least or equal to the threshold. And we also assume that the VDS, which is this voltage, is larger than the VGS minus the threshold, which is also called the overdrive voltage. Okay, so the node voltage at node G, we can calculate that this, that is done using the voltage divider rule and also looking at the VSS. So this is then given here and then we have this VG. So R2 over R1 plus R2 times the complete voltage across the network from top to bottom and also plus the VSS. That's shown here. So if you now substitute the values here given, you get minus 5 volts. Okay. Next step is considering the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the input loop, which is this part, because we know this voltage here and we can now set up an equation such that we can determine the parameters. So VG is equal to VGS plus the RS times IS and then plus the VSS. So we make the complete loop from this node all the way to ground. That's shown here. Now, what do we know from here? We know the left side and some values on the right side, but we don't know IS. IS is, or ID, the same thing because that is symmetric since the gate is zero, is given by this expression only valid for the saturation region operation and an ideal case and also for the end channel enhancement MOSFET. This is the expression for the drain current or the source current. It's the same. So taking this together and then substitute for the source here, this expression, we get this expression. Now what you recognize here is that the only unknown here is VGS because everything is known here. We know the resistor, we know the KN, the parameter of the transistor, also the threshold voltage and also the VSS. So if you now substitute everything, you can see there's 1000 for the RS and we have also 0.0. 5 to 1 for the KN and also the rest of the parameters here. So moving on, we get this expression now, we need to solve this. So we can solve that of course using a quadratic formula or we can just make a plot and then find the two solutions. These are the two solutions, so this is the graph and this is the horizontal line which is actually this 10. 
So I may you make these two intersections. One of them is this, 2.11. The other one is 2.87. So which one is valid? Now solving will get these two equations, or I mean solutions, but this is smaller than V threshold, which is then not valid because we assume it's saturation region. So we need then to fulfill these two conditions. But the second solution is larger than the threshold. So this is valid. So we need to use the VGS of 2.87 volts here. Now, since we know the V, uh, v gate to source, we can substitute that in the expression for the drain current and that will be then 7.30 milliamps. So that is the condition in this case. Okay. So we have now an important parameter, but let's also check the second condition for the saturation region of operation because we don't know yet if that is really the case. So for that, we set up the Kirchhoff voltage law at the output loop. So for this, because we look at the DC uh, circuit, and then we can say VDD is equal to this voltage across RD plus the voltage across VDS plus the voltage across RS plus VSS. That's shown here. Now we can take them together because we know IS and ID are exactly equal to each other. So we can group them RD and RS together. And then we have VDS here. Now we can write VDS in terms of the rest of the parameters. We have this. Now, if you now work it out, do the math here, you get 8.61 volts, which is definitely larger than the VGS minus V threshold, which is then 2.87 minus 2.5 is 0.3. 7 volts, so definitely 8.61 is larger than 0.37. So this is also valid. So we fulfill both conditions for our assumptions or assumption was indeed correct. So this is a way to work out the MOSFET circuits. First assumption, then check afterwards. If the, of course the assumption is not correct, then the MOSFET is probably working in the triode region. If it is not working in the triad using cold bills or the cutoff, that means there is no current flow at all. Okay, we move on and we collect our DC values here for the drain, current, and also the VDS. Now look at the simulation result. Let's see what we have calculated as indeed correct. So this is a circuit for the complete circuit, and we just apply here the DC analysis. You see the 7.30 milliamps for the drain current, and also 8.61 volts for the drain to source voltage. What we have done here for this M1, which is our transistor, we need to model that for the threshold and also the conduction parameter. That is done here using the SPICE model, which is the level one SPICE model. So one of the simplest uh, models, and it is really suitable for hand calculations. It's also called Shishman Hodge model. So this one, but it is sometimes also called level one. We see the threshold voltage, which is 2.5. That's actually what we have used. So we need to use that. We see here a beta, and that is related to Kn in this format, because the spice parameter K over the beta is actually Kp. So you can see beta or Kp in literature or in your simulator, but Kp and the, and the Kn has a relationship as shown here. W is our width of our MOSFET and the length is L, but you can take the uh, default values in order to get this current here. Default values for the W and L are 10 micrometers. So we can say both of them are 10 micrometers. So this ratio is just one. And that's also the case for this model. So Kp over two times one or Kp over two just is Kn. So the Kp must be two times Kn. So whatever you have here, you must multiply it by two to get this value. That's why we have here 104.2 milliamp per square volts. That's how you model that MOSFET here in the level one uh, model. Okay, let's now go to the AC analysis. This is now the next step. And we have now here our small signal model. We see the R in, we see the capacitor all shorted. That is the AC model condition. So we short this, we short this. You also disable all the DC sources for the DC voltage sources, that means the this one, the VDD and VSS is grounded. That's also what you see here because this will short this out and this is also already shorted, but the R1 goes from the gate to ground and R2 also from the gate to ground. That's why we have here R1 and R2 together in parallel from the gate. 
you see the model of the MOSFET itself is given in red box, dashed red box. And we see here the VGS, which is a small gate to source voltage. This is the controlled voltage, which is a voltage controlled current source. We see here an ID, which is our drain current, AC drain current. This is the drain node and this is source node, this is the gate node. We also see in a similar form since this C2 is now shorted and from the drain we see the RD is going to AC ground and RL goes to the physical ground. And both are of course are now parallel so you can also combine them. That's why we have now RDA parallel with RL, R1 parallel with R2. RN is still in place and also VI and we measure again the voltage at node D which is the drain node. This is an open connection, which is the modeling of this gate to source. There is no resistor there, which will, uh, which will be the case, for example, in the BGT for a dynamic resistor like RPI. We don't have it for the MOSFET in ideal case. Okay. Now this part here, looking here, is called the impedance going into the gate, so ZIG. ZIG is just a parallel combination of R1 and R2, or you can write it like this, and you can also work it out. We'll be then using the 200 kilo and 100 kilo ohms, you get 66.67 kilo ohms approximately. The GM, what you see here, is the transconductance. It has the unit of 1 over ohms or simons. That's given by this expression again, considering the ideal condition here. So we know what the ID is, which is the drain current in DC condition. And we also know the KN, which is the parameter of the MOSFET. So we can just substitute everything here and we get 38.55 millisiemens, simons. Okay, now we have it. We also calculate now this parallel combination of the drain resistance and the load. We get 1667 ohms, which is the parallel combination of 2 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms. But we need to know the voltage gain VO or VI. And we can now divide the problem in VGS over VI, which is then this voltage from this node to ground, which is the same thing, over VI, times the VO over VGS. That's the same thing. So we know what the voltage here is, VGS over VI, which is just ZIG over RM plus ZIG. That's just the voltage division. And VO is minus GM times the VGS, times the parallel combination of the two resistors here. Why? Because if you measure the voltage at this node, you measure the voltage from this node to ground, that means your current going in that direction, but the current is circulating in this direction, which is the drain current. And drain current, ID, AC drain current, is equal to GM times VGS. So we can also say that this is the correct expression. Now we can also express this in a ratio, VO or VGS, then we have this. Now, if I now take this ratio and this ratio in here in the multiplication together, I have now this expression, or given in a little bit more better nice array in this format. And we can now substitute here everything to calculate now the gain. Now, then we have, if you now just substitute the GM, ZIG, etc., everything in here, you will have this. So, what you have is then the minus 63.8 as the gain. It is again a minus, and it is again inverted like the common source, a common emitter amplifier in the BGTs. Okay, let's now look at the transfer response in our simulations and then verify this gain, voltage gain here. The blue line is again the waveform, which is our input, 10 millivolts peak, and then one, uh, 10 kilohertz as the frequency. The red line is again our output voltage. It is inverted, you can see that. It has also a larger peak peak value. So the peak peak value here for the input is 20 millivolts, but the peak peak value for the output is looking at the maximum and the minimum, which is approximately or exactly in this case 1.268 volts. Now, a simple calculation for the peak peak output divided by the peak peak input will give you now the gain also inverted, which is cal calculated from the simulation data is minus. 63.4, very close to, to what we have calculated as minus 63.8. So we can say it is really close and we can say that this is indeed a very nice result. All right, guys, this is our first example about the N-channel E-MOSFET or the enhancement MOSFET where we consider the common source amplifier. We have first worked out the DC analysis for this circuit and then use the DC parameters in our 
small signal model in our AC analysis and then calculated the voltage gain for this example. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know I will try to answer them as soon as possible. The examples before this about the DC analysis for the MOSFET will help you to understand this material uh, better and also follow that for later discussions. See you next time in another video. Take care.